Hello, Calculus fans. Uh, I'm going to do a particular problem that my students in calculus tend to hate, uh, the volume of a torus. Um, I don't think they hate donuts. Everyone likes donuts, I think. My son doesn't like donuts. I guess not everyone. Uh, but most people like donuts. Um, but uh, finding the volume of a donut using calculus is kind of challenging. Now, I, I mentioned in class how there's a shorter way using an old theorem um, uh, from a Greek mathematician. But I'll talk about that, I think, in a separate video. What the student, a student is asking me about this, they were wondering if we could re-derive this and what we did. So I'm going to do this, but this is the long way, and know that I'll follow up with a video. That's the short way. But in general, we have this technique to find the volume of something that starts with a region in 2D. And that applies to lots of things. Uh, for example, if you take this half circle and rotate it around the y-axis, you should recognize that that's a sphere. And you can use calculus to find the volume. Many of you may already know what that volume is. And you're going to get 4 thirds pi r cubed. Um, if you did a line and rotate it around, you're going to get a cone. And based off of the dimensions, the length and the base and the height, you can find the volume of the cone. If you took just a straight line, and some students just have a hard time visualizing this. Um, and I think that's one of the stumbling blocks. But if you do that, it's a cylinder. So you should see this is a cylinder. This is a cone. This is a sphere. Now, if you want to use calculus to do these problems, and there are ways to do volumes in calculus. This is just a calculus two course. If you take a 3D calculus course, you'll learn more general approaches. Um, but if it's something that is based off of something in 2D, in this case, a circle, a circle that's over here, and then it's just revolved around, you can actually do it with one variable calculus because we can reduce it down to one variable, which I will do in a moment. Okay, so let's draw this a little bigger now that I'm ready to go. So we need, we're going to try to turn it into a 2D problem set up a volume of revolution using calculus two techniques uh, and then get this terrible integral <laughs> it said students don't like this question okay so here we go we've got this circle and the truth is what i tell students to do is to just find the volume if you rotate the top part around that's the volume of the top half of the donut now it's a real challenge to eat a donut that way um, <laughs> but at the end, we're going to do two for the top and the bottom times this volume that I've just drawn. Now, in order to do it, you're going to need the equation for this circle. And I'll show you some visuals in a second, but this is, so what do we have? We have a circle centered at R comma zero. And if you have a point on that circle, X comma Y, the distance from that point to the center is lowercase r. And so remember our distance formula, distance from x, y to r0 is this. So the square root of that has to be little r. And so this is r squared. That's just the equation of a circle. OK, in terms of setting up this volume, you do have some choices. You could do it in terms of X. You could do it in terms of Y. At the time that we did this, um, in our calculus course, we did it in terms of X because we only had that method. So let's do that same thing we did earlier in the term just to practice. Now, I think there's multiple reasons people get confused. Some get confused about the equation of the circle. So they've already I've already lost those people. Uh, some get confused just about the idea of visualizing the rotation. So that's a challenge that students face. Some get confused by the fact that they're using variables. So for those students that get stuck on variables, I just tell them to plug in some numbers. Imagine this is 10 and the radius is 2. So this would be 8. This would be 12. And this is a great strategy in general for any time you're stuck in a math question. And it's given to you in a general form. So this would be the example is to just run a quick scenario. This is 10. 
little r is two. Now with practice, you can get to a point where you don't, you can go directly, but at any point if you're stuck, go back to your sample and say, okay, the equation of the circle here is 10 squared plus y squared equals two squared. And whatever you would do in the gen in the specific example, we're gonna try to do over here. So let's do some of what we just did. I would like to label this point. What is that point? Well, here, this was 10 and this was eight. How did we get there? We subtracted the little radius. So this is gonna be big R minus little r. That's the x value there. This x value is gonna be big R and that's one confusion students told me they had. And this is going to be big R plus little r. That's important because those are the bounds of my region. In fact, those are going to be the bounds of my integral. Those are the values that x can take on. So again, it only looks confusing. So let's go over here. Everything we do, let's do, let's mimic on our particular example. It's going to be the integral from 8 to 12. So it looks less mysterious when you do that. Again, at this point, people are probably thinking, where is that 2 from again? The 2 is because I'm only finding the volume of the top half. It's like I'm taking an axe and cutting it in half. So there also would be this bottom half, but I'm trying to simplify things a little bit because we have plenty of work ahead of us. Okay, next. If we're gonna do this in terms of X, this is what I tell students to always do, label a random X in the region. Call that X. I just picked a random spot. And also label the height. And this is another challenge students sometimes have which is how do you label the height? Well, that was the point of getting the equation. If you have an equation and you know X and you want Y, you can rearrange it to your liking. So Y squared would be four minus X minus 10 squared. So Y is the square root of that. Okay, so I can label this thing now as the square root. It's unfortunately can't be simplified. It would be nice if it could, but it can't. So that's the best we can do. That's that height. In general, what would it be? So if I labeled this x, this height right here is going to be the square root. And we're just gonna rearrange in the same way. There's gonna be a little r squared. And if you're not following me, let's write it out. I really wanna break this down because I get so many questions about this every year. And I think it's doable. It's just a few things that are happening all together. Again, I'm gonna make a separate video and show you how to do this problem in a few seconds, and then you'll be really mad at me. <laughs> okay, so if I do that, if I'm doing it in terms of X and I rotate this around, that gives rise to what we call a cylindrical shell. And back when we learned this method, we had to find the radius of the cylindrical shell and the height, and we talked about how the volume will be two pi times the radius times the height. Now, if that's a separate thing I could review, but that's a, a thing we've done a lot of in this course. Uh, so this is going to be two pi times the radius times the height of a given cylindrical shell. Now here is an example on this one, and the radius is x, and that's gonna be the same here and here. So the only question is, what is the height? Well, it's this. But in general, what will it be? It will be this, same thing. Okay, so to me, the actual setup is like a lot of other volume questions we did. It's just there's a whole bunch of symbols. And sometimes that's a stumbling block for people. And sometimes it's something else. Okay, so let's kind of stop for a moment and assess where we're at. That's the setup if you want the volume of the torus and you're determined to, to not use any shortcuts <laughs> given to you by a Greek mathematician. So that'll be for the second part of the video. Okay, how do we integrate such a thing? Again, I think some of the challenges students face is all the variables. So let's continue to do this side by side. Apologies if I'm going too slow, but this is some somebody asked me this on my discussion board. They said they've worked with this all term. They're still confused on it. So I really want to hammer every fine detail here because I think there are some good things to take away from this problem when it comes to volume of revolution 
and a few other things. But let's put an example over here just in case the variables are burning your eyeballs. <laughs> Ultimately, you, it's nice to get more and more comfortable working with variables because the more variables you work with, the more problems you're solving at once. Here we're solving one specific problem. Here we're solving all the problems. Hope you can see the value in that. So I would much prefer to do the general one, but if I'm confused, I would do an example. So the question becomes, how do you integrate this? Well, you would like to do substitution, but you can't because the derivative of this would also have a 10 in it. So you, if you chose u to be the inside, and you took the derivative, negative 2x minus 10, it doesn't cancel with the outside because of this darn 10. So this was the challenge. So back when we did this problem, I said, you're going to face a challenge right away. And I had a bit of advice to try to do a simplifying substitution. And I always encourage students when you're trying to simplify, instead of using U, sometimes using T is a good idea, but save U for later. <laughs> this was the simplification we did. That's going to make this look nicer. It doesn't immediately solve the problem, but it helps. DT. This is one important use of substitution that we've done many times. Doesn't really solve the problem, but makes it look a little nicer. And all together in our example, we have 4 pi, we have the integral, the 8 would become negative 2, the 12 would become 2, and then you'd have this x, and this is good review for us. How do you get rid of your x? You go over here and you say x is t plus 10. That was the key idea. Now, if you do it in general, you would have t is x minus r, and all these nice things happen. So when you plug it in, you get negative r, you get little r. Let's take the, um, the 4 pi out. And then you have the x will become not t plus 10, but t plus big r. And then we'll have the square root, and we'll have r squared minus t squared dt. But if you're having trouble with that, think about this. That's what we're trying to integrate. And what I would then do is expand, because what I see is this. So let's look at our example, and then keep jumping back and forth. This is a good strategy if you're ever working on a problem and there's too many variables. Just get rid of some of the variables. So you get this, and then you get this. And I, I gave lots of tips about this problem um, in class because I knew students would get to this point and then get stuck. But I had hoped students would get to that point. So let's just look at this for a second before we jump back over here. This we now can do a substitution. Not only can we do a substitution, I think when you plug in positives and negatives, you get opposites. So everything's going to cancel there. That ends up being zero. So I'll leave that to the, to the viewer to do a substitution. U equals 4 minus T squared and compute that. And you get zero. The reason I know so quickly that it's zero is because when you plug in 2, you get positive when you plug in negative 2 you get the opposite sign but then you subtract and so there's we would call that an odd function so I cheated a little bit but the video is already too long <laughs> so what was the challenging at the time is we didn't know trig substitution now we do know trig substitution and so if you wanted to do trig substitution you could do that but the key little trick here was to realize this right here is the equation for a circle well, it's not using an x, but that's okay. If I wrote y squared plus t squared equals 4, it's that equation if you solve for y. And that's a circle of radius 2. And in this case, it's just the top part of a circle of radius 2 from negative 2 to 2. So this was really clever at the time. And that's why I told you in class that this represents the upper half of a circle. So you don't even have to compute it. I gave that as a hint. So I said this is a half of the area of this circle. And I know that's really surprising and unsatisfying. Again, at this point in the term, you don't have to remember that. You would just do trig sub and you would get the same answer. But that was a shortcut. Okay, so when all was said and done, we had 4 pi. We had, two, so this was 20 pi. 
and we had this became 80 pi squared. That's the volume of that particular torus. If you do the same thing over here and expand, you get the integral from negative r to r of t times the square root of r squared. Now I'm about to check my work in a second. I didn't prepare this. I'm doing all in one take, so to speak. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, this becomes r squared. Oh, there's a big R here, minus T squared DT. This, once again, is half of the area of the circle. That was the tricky, tricky, tricky part. I agree. This ends up being zero if you do substitution. And our final answer is four pi times R times a half times pi R squared. So it's two pi squared times big R times R squared. And I'd like to double check if that comes out to be the same as this, because our big R was, if I put a 10 here and a two here, yeah, I'll get that same value. And there's this, somebody asked me that on the discussion board. Um, and it's terrible, <laughs> somewhat terrible integral to do. Okay, so in my next video, I'll talk about how you can immediately get this from the so-called theorem of Pappas. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I did a little bit of research on it, which I had never done, so I'm happy to make that video. Mostly that's a video explaining how the center of mass formula comes into play in other places, but I'll stop there and post that for the student that asked this question before I go on to other things. All right, hope that helps.